Hello again, this is uh, Pastor Abel from uh, Kick Dragon Vids, and welcome again to another teaching on Satan Shall Come, and we're going to start a new session called Satan Shall Imitate. Actually, he's going to imitate the coming of Christ, and there are many, many ways he's going to imitate, and you know, uh, I was, I'm teaching the Bible verse by verse at our church, and uh, right now I'm teaching uh, 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians, and I thought to myself, well, what better chapter in the Bible to to talk about this than Second Thessalonians chapter 2 as an introduction of what we're going to be doing for the next um, maybe a year on talking how Satan shall imitate the coming of Christ. So so much said and let's, let's pray. Father we give you thanks and glory Father. Uh, thank you for the wisdom and thank you for the word that we're about to receive. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ your son. Thank you Father. Amen. So let's open our Bibles to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. So there's the subject. The subject is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering back to him. You know, we're going to be gathered to him. And in this gathering, you know, Jesus t told us about the parable of the tares. In the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 39, he said, the, when he was talking about the tares, he said, the enemy that sowed him is the devil. And then he says, the harvest or the gathering is the end of the world, and the reapers or the gatherers are the angels. So when does this gathering happen? Well, in Second Thessalonians, it's going to set the order straight. It's going to put everything the way it's going to happen. But let's talk a bit about this gathering here in First Corinthians chapter 15. And uh, let's look at verse 50. It says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. They cannot. Why? Because as it is written there in First Timothy chapter 6, verse 16, that God or the Lord... Uh, he only hath immortality, immortality dwelling in himself, in which no man could approach to, in which no man can see. You can't see the Lord, I mean, with his eyes, praise God, or the coming of the Lord. In other words, heaven is coming here, and, and uh, the new heaven, actually, it says there in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 13. Uh, a new heaven and a new earth means rejuvenated earth, a rejuvenated heaven. And we also have to be rejuvenated. We also have to be transformed. It says, Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We should not all sleep. You know, not, not all of us are going to die or, or go to the Father, I mean, uh, or by dying. It says, We should not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And what does all mean? It means everybody, good, bad, and ugly. Praise God. Everybody has to be changed. It don't matter. Everybody has to be changed. Why? Because God is coming here. And the kingdom of God is going to be here. Wherever God is, there is heaven. And as it is written there in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 41, And God and, God, and the Son of Man shall, shall send His angels and, and uh, praise God, and gather out of His kingdom everyone that offends and everyone that does iniquity. Well, I thought, you know, only the good people were going to be taken to heaven. No, <laughs> we all have to be here to be judged, good, bad, and ugly. So we all have to be changed, praise God. Different world, new world, new body, uh, you know, and, 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 uh, a new age, in other words, a new world age. And it says, we all must be changed. And as it's written there in the book of Acts, chapter 24, verse 15, for there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust, not separate resurrections. Praise God. Only one. One transformation. One, one uh, praise God. And there's only going to be one. All of us, the just and the unjust, are going to be transformed at the same time. When, in verse 52 says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, twinkling of an eye at the last trump. When? At the last. And the Greek is very specific here. The word last is, 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 is katos which means final or the furthest to the end. In other words, out of seven, which one is the last trump? And you might tell me, no, brother, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're mixing the, the judgment trumps of Revelation with this trump. Yeah, this is the last one we're going to hear. Well, it doesn't matter if there's seven or it doesn't matter if there's 7,000 or 7 million trumps. The thing is that the word last in the Greek means the farthest to the end. 
So praise God. So the farthest to the end trump, of course, out of seven trump is the seventh. Praise God. It doesn't matter what your what your belief is or what you think is true. It matters what the original tongue, the Greek, what does it say? It matters what the Bible says. And the word last means eskatos, means the last one, the furthest to the end. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. Let's go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and verse 2. It says, that you be not soon shaken in mind. Don't let nobody be sh shake your mind, you know, praise God. Or be troubled. No, don't be worried about this. Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, you know. You know, if, that, if you didn't completely understand, you know, that first letter... Praise God. You know, Paul is saying, you know what? I'm here to make you understand how everything's going to conspire, how everything's going to, praise God, come to pass. Praise God. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's see what so confusion, confusion, <laughs> sorry, I can't just couldn't say that word. It says, in, <laughs> praise God, let's, let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13, because we got to pick up the subject. It says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them, First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. In other words, those that have died. That you sorrow not as those others which have no hope. I don't want you to be crying like you're not going to see them again. Praise God, because, you know, the Bible does tell us there in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. When, you know, the dust returns to dust and the Spirit returns to God who gave it. You know, there, when we die, you know, we go to the Father. And verse 14 says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do you believe that Jesus died and rose again? It says, if we believe, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. The key word is with, with him. In other words, they're coming with him. It doesn't say come to him. He says it's come, come to come with him. Why? They're with him. When people die, there will be, as Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 clearly states, the dust returns to dust, dust where it came from, or this body returns to dust where it came from, and the Spirit returns to God who gave it. As, as uh, Paul said there in Philippians chapter 1 verse 23, I'm in a straight betwixt having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. You see, uh, first, uh, Second Thessalonians 5, 8, you know, to be, be, be uh, absent from this body and be present with the Lord, you know, praise God. Uh, it says, for this, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so them also which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him? They're coming with him. Why? Because they're there with him. Verse 15 says, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, the key, the key word here is remain, remain unto when? Praise God. Unto the coming of the Lord. That's why it is written there in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 13, it says, Those that endure or remain unto the end, those shall be saved. And when is the end? Of course, Matthew 13, 39, the end is the gathering, or the harvest is the end of the world, or the end of this world age. Praise God. So we must remain unto when? Unto which coming? Unto the coming of the Lord. So how many times is the Lord going to come? He already came once. So how many times is He going to come again? Only one more time. The Bible says there in Hebrews 9, 28, the second time. And that's it. There's no half coming. There's no three and a quarter coming. There's no five, eight coming. There's no seven and eight coming. Praise God. And there's just one more coming. And it says, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are saved. Shall not precede them. Why? Because they're already with the Father. They're there. Praise God. It says, so we must remain unto the coming of the Lord. And verse 16 says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Which trump? Didn't we just read? The last trump. The furthest to the end trump. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Praise God. It says the Lord Himself shall what? Shall descend. No, brother. See the the, the second coming of the Lord. Uh, it has two stages. The first stage is when He comes in the air, and the second stage is when He comes to the earth. Well, let me get this straight. Didn't you just say the first one was the coming to the air? Praise God. So you're saying the Lord is coming, but coming to the air, and then He's coming again. So. 
but to the earth. So the first one is like a half coming or maybe a 5 eight coming. It depends how far the Lord, <laughs> how far the Lord is from heaven or from the earth. You know, it could be a half coming or 5 eight coming or 7 eight coming or three quarter coming. I guess it just depends how far the Lord reaches as is far from the air to the earth, I guess. Praise God. No, the Lord is only going to come one more time. Praise God. If he descends from heaven, praise God, he's only going to come one more time. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with a trumpet. With, see, in other words, when you're saying that he comes in the air, then he comes in, in, to the earth. You're saying he's coming two more times. Praise God. Is the Lord going to come three times or two times? For well, the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Praise God. And of course, the two witnesses and those who will be slain, they will rise first. Verse 17 says, Then we which are alive and remain. So when do we must, to when do we have to remain? Unto the coming of the Lord. Which coming? The second coming of the Lord. Then to remain shall be caught up, or the word is har, harpazo in the, in the Greek, which means to be pulled by force or seized. And in no way is it, I don't know why the Latin, they put rape, rapio, which means seize, kidnap, or rape. But in the Greek, it means to be seized, to be pulled by force. You know, we're going to be pulled by force into what? Together to meet, to be with them in the clouds. That's the gathering. You know, clouds not necessarily means white clouds. Praise God. Uh, it could be also, as, as uh, Paul said in Hebrews 12, 1, a cloud of witnesses. In other words, the gathering. We're going to be pulled. It says we're going to be caught up together with them in the gathering, in that, in that cloud, to meet the Lord in the air. What does air mean? In the Greek. doesn't mean atmosphere. doesn't mean we're going to be pulled into the atmosphere. No, the word air, the atmosphere, is the word air. And what does air in, in your Strong's number 109, what does it mean? It means breath or respire. Like, like God said in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, He said, And God or formed Adam. Adam out of the ground and breathe in his nostrils the breath of life. In other words, the spiritual body. In other words, we're going to be pulled by force into that air, into that spiritual body. And no different than 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that we're going to be, hallelujah, praise God, transformed. No, it doesn't say anything different. It just means that we're going to be transformed into that spiritual body by force. Praise God. That's all. It doesn't mean that we're going to be <laughs> take zap the ways on where it praise God. Well, Senor, let's go back to Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse two says, uh, finishing up, it says, Nor by word nor by letter as from us, as the, the day of Christ is at hand. The word hand means it is imminent, or praise God, like it says there in First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse fifty two, in a moment when at the twinkle of an eye when? At the last trump. Yes, the coming of the Lord is gonna be instant. But when? At the seventh trump. Praise God. It says, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means. Don't let this man, that man, or any other man deceive you. As it is written there in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 6, it says, Let no man deceive you by vain words. What are vain words? Words that are not written in the Bible. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The day of the Lord, the gathering. Shall not come except there come what? A falling away first. Praise God. And the word falling is apostasia in the Greek. What does the word apostasia mean? It means to depart from the truth or to defect from the truth. Nothing else. Praise God. Well, no, brother, the, you know, I don't know why the King James Bible, it used the word apost uh, or the falling away. You know, the first translations uh, of, the, of the English. Uh, it, uh, it's, it clearly says departure, which means the rapture. Well, it doesn't matter what English or what any version says. It matters what the original tongue was, what the, how the original manuscripts were written. And the original manuscripts doesn't say depart or zap the way uh, out of the earth. It doesn't say that. It says the the the, the departure from uh, from the true the apostasia. That's what the original said. Praise God. 
there come a, a possessia first. First guy that says it's written there in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4. First guy that says, and many shall go to and fro, means they shall apostate or apostatize, but the knowledge shall increase. And as it is written there in the book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 23, it says, when the transgressions are come to full, the apostasy is come to full. A king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand or shall arise, which is Satan, praise God. It says, that day shall not come except there come what? A falling of the apostasia first. I don't care how, how bad you want it to say departure. It doesn't say departure. It says apostasia, praise God. First, and the man of sin be revealed. Who is this man of sin? Well... Praise God. Who better to have this title of man of sin than the one that started sin? Who's the one that started sin? Well, back in the world, first world age, it says there in the book, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 28, it says that, oh, uh, or king of Tyrus, or prince of Tyrus, it tells them, oh, meaning Satan, it tells them, it tells them, you were perfect in beauty until iniquity was found in you. Because Ezekiel Ezekiel 28, praise God. Around verse 15 through 18, you know, praise God. And then it says there in the book of uh, 1 John, chapter 3, verse 8, He that sinneth is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. Oh, Señor. So who's the first one to sin? Satan. Praise God. So who better? Uh, uh, could you find somebody else that can sin more than Satan? Praise God. If not, if you do, well, maybe you should take Satan's job. Praise God. Well, Senor, there's nobody else called the man of sin. Whoa, whoa, it says man. It's got to be a man. Well, the Lord refers to Satan as a man in many places. It says there in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, in the beginning verses, it says, And you that say you're our God, you're not a God, but a man. And it says there in the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 12, Oh, Lucifer, how art thou fallen from heaven, though that weaken is the nation. Look, but look at verse 16, and, and you know what the God tells him? He says, Is this the man that shaped the earth, that made the whole nations tremble? Or Praise God. So he calls him man. Why? Because we, man, was created in the image of God and in the image of the angels. So naturally he's going to call him man. Man of sin. What does Gabriel mean? Well, mighty man of God. Praise God. So this man of sin is no, no one but nobody else. Deserves that title but Satan. Be revealed. It even says it in, the, it even says it in verse 8. Then shall that wicked be revealed. So who's the wicked one? Satan. It says... And the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Praise God. You know, praise God. What does perdition mean? Well, the word perdition is the Greek word apolia. And I'm going to take out my strongs and I'm going to turn there and uh, think to number 6684 on your 684 in your strongs. And I'm going to read from the strongs. You know, praise God. And it says there 684 is the word apolia from presumed, uh, derived of 622, which means ruin or loss. So who's the one, who's the son that's already been lost? Well, Jesus told us in the book of John, chapter 17, verse 12, while I was with you in the world, I kept them in thy name, right? Praise God. And everyone that Joseph gave is me, I have kept except for one. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition. Praise God. And who is the son of perdition? Of course. Who's the only one judged? The Bible says there in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 11, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. So who's the one judged? Who's the one lost already? Satan. Praise God. And it tells you to derive from 622. So let's go to number 622 in your strong. And the Greek word is apolomi from 575 in the base of 3639 to destroy fully. Reflects to perish or lost. He's already perished. Satan's already sent us to perish. Where? In Ezekiel 28. Praise God. And, and, and then check out 623. Just for the fun of it. It's the Greek word apollyon. Which is participle of 622. And it means the or a destroyer. I.E. Satan. That means when you see the I.E. And, and your strongs. It means that is to say. 
So it means that is the destroyer, that is to say Satan. So who's the son of perdition? Nobody else but Satan himself. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Praise God. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. You know, this was prophesied in old in Isaiah 14 that he's going to magnify himself above all. In the book of Daniel chapter 11, verse 36 and 37, and we'll go over all those, that he's going to magnify himself above all. What does that mean? That he's going to give himself the name that is above all names. And what name? Given unto men and given unto everybody, everybody, praise God. What name is greater than the name of Jesus? So by magnifying himself above all, that means he's going to give himself the name of Jesus. Jesus, above all that is called God or that is worthy, so that he as God, as who? As, as the evil one killing all people, no, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing, and that word showing or shewing in the Greek means demonstrating or showing off himself that he is God. So how is Satan going to show off that he's God? By, by performing miracles. Look at me. Look at me in the book of Revelation chapter 13, verse, verse 11. And it says, And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. He looks like the lamb slain, like Jesus. And he spake as a dragon. Why? Because he is the dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast. And the first beast, of course, is the political beast, which means the one world system before him and causes the earth and then was dwelled therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed and it was healed because it reached the seventh head of the last kingdom received the fatal the, the last man kingdom you know men were gonna mess it up and they always mess it up Satan comes and replaces the kings of the earth with his kings his ten kings and by doing so heals the fatal wound and in verse 13 says and he go and he does great wonders, so that he what he showing up, make it fire come down from heaven into there in the sight of men. He wants to demonstrate he's God. And deceiveth verse fourteen says, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. He wants you to believe he's Jesus, the most beautiful angel God ever created, doing miracles, showing off his power. Which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Praise God. And let's go back to 2 Thessalonians 2 verse, verse 5. It says, Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. Don't you remember? What did Paul tell us about these things? What did Paul tell us about fallen angels and they're going to come? Well, remember Galatians 1.8. What does it say there? If, if any angel from heaven come and preach to you another gospel, let it be accursed. If any angel from where? From from heaven. From where is this angel? From heaven. And if he's preaching another gospel, what kind of angel is that? Praise God. Not a good angel. This is a bad angel. It's a fallen angel. And didn't Jesus, didn't Paul, Apostle Paul also said there in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, And marvel not, for Satan himself is disguised or transformed as an angel of light. And who is light? And who's the light? Jesus is the light. Praise God. Bless him now. He's going to come disguised. And where else? Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 10. For this cause shall a woman wear a veil, meaning put Christ as a form of authority, or show Christ as their authority, because of the angels. Which angels? The fallen angels. Praise God. That, uh, the days of Noah, as the days of Noah were. What, what, what happened in the days of Noah? Well, there was seducing women. Praise God. So in many places did Paul tell us of these things. The Satan, that angels were going to come down. And it says there, in verse 6, And now you know what withholdest, that he might be revealed in his time. Let's go to verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The word hold it, withhold is in verse 6. And the word let it is the same word. It's, an, uh, it's a verb. It's a Greek verb. Or trans actually, it's a transitive verb. 
In other words, it, there's going to be no uh, contradiction. It has to pick up the subject. It has to go with the subject of Satan being the temporal God. So what withhold is Satan from being revealed? Or, or, what, or what is it or who withholds Satan or holds fast Satan to be revealed? Well, the answer is real simple, praise God. It's in the book of Revelations again, Revelation chapter 12, praise God, verse 7. It says, and there was war in heaven. Michael, that's the who withholdeth Satan, and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon, dragon fought in his angels. And verse 8, here's where we're going to find out the what withholdeth Satan. And prevail not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. So if the subject in 2 Thessalonians is Satan, then the object that goes with the drastic verb must be his position or his axis that he has in heaven. Praise God. That is what is going to be taken away. It says it clear right here. It says, Neither there was place, well, it says, and prevailed not, neither was there place found any more in heaven. In other words, that access is going to be taken away. That's what's going to be taken away. Praise God. And when that access is taken away, that's when Satan is coming down, having great wrath, because he knoweth he has a short time or short space. Praise God. That's when he puts on the role of the Antichrist. And only then, praise God. What does Antichrist mean? Antichrist means the instead of Christ. The in place of Christ. Why? Because that's when he takes the in place. That's where he sits in place of Christ in the temple of God. The instead, the substitution of Christ. He's going to put himself in the place of Christ. Showing himself that he is God. And showing off, demonstrating that he is God, that he's Jesus. Praise God. So now we know the who, who withhold the Satan? Michael. And the what? What withhold the Satan from being revealed? His position. He still has access. But once that access is, because the Bible says he's there accusing us before God day and night, so he still has access. Job 1 6, remember? Praise God. Lord well, Senor, he, he, he goes to and fro in the earth and walking up and down and, and goes back to the throne of God and accuses us. Praise God. Well, that access is going to be gone. So that's when Satan. Puts on the role of the Antichrist. Oh yeah, and only then. Yeah, you might the spirit of the Antichrist, but the Antichrist, praise God, is when Satan takes the role of the instead of Christ. And that's why it says in verse 8, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8, and then shall the wicked be revealed. Praise God. And, and, and you know, I'm glad that the that uh, King James says wicked. You know why? Because we know who the wicked one is. First uh, John three twelve, not as Cain who was of the wicked one. First uh, John chapter two verse thirteen and fourteen. It tells clearly tells us who the wicked one is there. And Ephesians chapter six verse sixteen. You know the fiery darts of the wicked or the wicked one. So praise God. But the Greek word is it, it means the lawless one. Why is Satan the lawless one? Praise God. Why is he the lawless one? We just went over it. The son of perdition. What does the son of perdition mean? He's already lost. He's already judged. In other words, the law does not apply to him. Why? Because no matter what he does, he's already been sentenced to, to death. He's already been judged. And look, no matter what he does, if he asks for forgiveness, he won't be forgiven. Why? Because he's already sentenced. He's already lost. So uh, clearly, the law does not apply to him. Well, it could be talking about Gentile because the law doesn't apply to Gentile. Well, have you read Romans chapter 2, verse 12, where it says, Praise God, those that without, are without the law shall perish without the law. And of course, 1 Timothy 1, 9, praise God, it says, Knowing this, that the law is not made for righteous man, but for the lawless, <laughs> praise God, and the disobedient. So, praise God, so the lawless one is Satan because he's the only one that the law doesn't apply anymore, praise God. Everybody else still awaits judgment, but not Satan. Satan has already been judged, so he's the lawless one. And then shall the lawless one be revealed. And pay very close attention to the next verse. It says, Whom the Lord shall consume. So we shifted from the coming of Satan, and who's coming after Satan? 
So we shifted from the coming of Satan to the coming of Christ, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, that means the word of God, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. It doesn't say kill. The word destroy in the Greek is is the word katargeo um, or something, katargeo, praise God, which means to render completely useless. In other words, the Antichrist, the role of the Antichrist, the role of the false prophet, the role of the beast will be rendered completely useless. Why? Because he's not, he, he can do what, how many miracles he wants. But as long as the true Christ is here, he's not going to deceive anybody anymore. So that role of, uh, the role of the, instead of Christ, or the in place of Christ, is completely destroyed, completely rendered useless. Because that's what the word destroy means. It doesn't mean kill. Right? That means useless. And let me, let me, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Praise God. Bless well, you. So he's going to destroy that role of the Antichrist yeah. completely. Praise God. With the brightness of his coming. In other words, saying he's not going to be able to deceive people anymore. Because that role is gone. And this was written, this is written in Revelation uh, 19. And I'm going to go over it right quick. Praise God. Revelation 19, verse what? 19 and 20. Well, I'll just read 19, 20. Praise God. It says, And the beast, well, and verse 19 says, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and the armies gathered together. You see, before the gathering of us to Christ, there has to be a gathering of Satan. Praise God. We'll talk about that later. They gathered together to make war against him and sat on the horse and against the, his army. Armageddon in the Hebrew means the place of the gathering. Jerusalem. Praise God. Verse 20 he says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that brought miracles. Well, well who's the one writing miracles? In Revelation 13 it says that the beast wrought the miracles. There's the second beast. And here, we're, the false prophet is the one doing the miracles. What is it? it, it the, the beast is one, one entity and the false prophet is another one? No. Praise God. It's, it's roles of Satan. One man, Satan. The false prophet is Satan. Or the role of Satan. The beast is Satan. It was just one person. Praise God. Read Revelation 13. Read Revelation 13. Who's doing the miracles there? The beast. And over here in Revelation 19, it says the false prophet. So which one is it? It's talking about two entities or just one? Just one. The dragon. Praise God. The, the, the old serpent called the devil. Before him, which he deceived them, that had received the mark of the beast, and the, they worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So that's where he completely renders the rose uh, useless because he's not going to be able to use them anymore. Well, it doesn't make sense. Be, oh, I'm still it, 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 the true Jesus being here. Hallelujah, praise God. Everybody's gonna know. Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord when He comes the second time. Because there's not gonna be any doubt who the true Jesus is. Praise God. And that's in Philippians two, chapter nine through eleven, right? Praise God. And it says in. Let's, let's start again. Verse 8 says, and, the, and then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Verse 9, even him, but the word even him is in italics. That means it was put in there by man, and the King James does a good job in that. So let's read it without, without the italics. It's whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. We're talking about the coming of Jesus, whose coming is after the working of Satan. So who's coming after the working of Satan? Who's coming? Are we talking about here in verse 8 and verse 9? The coming of the Lord, whose coming is after the working of Satan. Jesus is coming after the working of Satan. Jesus is coming after the working of Satan. He's coming after the working of Satan. Let's get into debt in our head. Well, no, brother. You know, the, it's talking about the coming of the lawless one, which uh, is according to the working of Satan. Nowhere does it say lawless one in verse in verse nine. Nowhere. 
It was inputted there by man. If your Bible says the lawless one is coming after the uh, uh, the working of Satan, your your Bible's lying. It was put in there but, uh, intentionally to make you think that the Antichrist is somebody else other than Satan. Praise God. But when you read it correctly as it is written, but the coming of the Lord, whose coming is after the working of Satan, well, oh, brother, no, the word, the word there, uh, uh, after, it means, uh, it, it means uh, according to, praise God. Well, let's look at the Strong's again, praise God. And then let's go to Greek number 25, 96. And the Greek word for after is the word kata, which means it's a prime, it's a particle, and, it, and this is the, the definition. Down in place or time. So what does the word after mean? Down in place and time. How would you describe the word after without using the word after? Well, you would say fur further along or down in place or time. So it just means after. It doesn't mean according to. It says down in place or time, depending or in varied relations. It, and, then, and then it has the, the, the praise God, it says according to the case uh, to which, which it is joined. So we're, we're comparing, what are we comparing? At the time of the coming of Satan and the time of the coming of Jesus. So which one is further down or which one is down in, in place or time or after? Which one is after? Who comes before? Satan comes before Jesus. Who comes after? Jesus. Let's read that again. It says, whom the Lord, verse 8 says, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, whose coming is after the working of Satan. After, after means after. Praise God. Praise God. If your Bible says the lawless one who's going to, man, that Bible's lying to you, man. Praise God. I'm sorry to hear that. And mostly all the new movement Bibles or the new translation Bibles, all of them say the same thing. And they're lying to you. Why? Because they want you to think that the Antichrist is somebody else instead of Satan. When it clearly tells you that Jesus is coming after the working of Satan. Who's going to be here? Satan. It says right here, the working of Satan. And how does he work? What is his MO? With all power and signs and lying wonders. That's when he comes with all his power. That's why Jesus tells us in the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 18, Behold, oh, behold, I saw Satan. He, he, he foresaw Satan. Behold, I saw Satan fall down from heaven. That's lightning meaning. He's going to come imitating the coming of Christ. Because Jesus comes. Praise God. As lightning that shineth from east to west. Right? Meaning everybody shall see him. It says, But behold, I give you power. To tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Meaning, talking about this time when Satan comes with all his power, with nine signs and wonders. It says, notwithstanding, rejoice not in this, that the, the spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Whose coming is after the work of the same with all power and signs and nine wonders. He's going to fool people. He's going to be the most beautiful angel. Performing miracles, verse 10 says, and with all deceivableness, he's the father of lies. He knows how to deceive people. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish. Who are those that perish? Those that believe not in the Lord Jesus Christ. Those that rather listen to men instead of God. Because they receive not the love of the truth. See, they don't want anything with the truth. They'd rather, they rather listen to a bunch of uh, flyaway doctrines, a bunch of flyaway like a butterfly. Praise God. It, 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 nowhere does it say that. Praise God. Or flyaway fairy tales. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Verse 11 says, For this cause God shall send them strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. And the word lie is the word pseudos in the Greek. Which means falsehood. 
But also, the word surus also means, uh, praise God, remember the word surus Christos, which means false Christ. Well, it, all means, it also means uh, the sp spurious pretender or the false one. In other words, if you don't receive the truth right now, that when that Satan, when Satan shows up, you're going to believe it's Jesus. Praise God. And God is going to make you are going to drink the, the wine of the, of the instead of Jesus Christ. I mean, you, you don't want to listen to the word. I mean, instead of, you know, you rather listen to man instead of God. Praise God. Like it is written there in the Bible in the Old I have written great things of the law, but they count it, thing, they count it as a strange thing. Praise God. At the end of the book of Isaiah. And with all deceitfulness and unrighteousness in that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, or the lie, or the false one. That they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Praise God. Of all chapters in the Bible, this one probably is the most uh, important one. Why? Because it clearly sets in order what what's going to what, what's going to happen you know our gathering together or to God does not happen until after the apostasy and until after the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition and it tells you clearly man the second Thessalonians tells you many many ways <laughs> that Satan's going to be revealed praise God the wicked the lawless one the son of man the son of the son of sin, uh, the son of perdition, the man of sin. It, man, it, can't, it can't speak to you more clearly than that, that the Antichrist is Satan. Praise God. And it tells you that we are not going to be gathered until, you know, praise God, until he is at the temple showing that he himself is God. Praise God. And if, and if that's the most important chapter, you know, guess which, which chapter Satan is going to try to corrupt. By adding words like, or oh, the, the coming of the lawless one, when it clearly is saying, it's clearly talking about the coming of Christ, coming after Satan. Praise God. So, um, hopefully, uh, next time, uh, we're going to finish for today, you know, and uh, hopefully you can join me next time as we get it deep into it. We're going to talk about Satan imitating the coming of Christ in many ways. Praise God. Uh, praise God. Uh, uh, in many verses, I think it's going to be a long session until we finish that. Praise God. But, you know, I'm not doing this because I want to be on YouTube. No, no, man. Uh, I'm very, you know what, I'm very nervous to come out on the camera. And, uh, praise God, I'm doing it because, you know, uh, we need to hear all sides of the story. And I'm not saying you haven't heard all the sides of the story, man. I'm pretty sure you've heard them all. But, praise God, you, we, we, we get a better picture when we see all the evidence laid out and we can reach a better judgment and uh, hopefully I was in the name of Lord Jesus Christ you know uh, I was we were able to share some knowledge and and share and join with me next time you know stay in God's word you know Jesus is the word and if you love God you love Jesus well you love the word praise God and if you don't love the word well you don't love Jesus right praise God and so uh, thank you for joining me and until next time God bless and uh, praise God, kick some dragon, <laughs> praise God.